We last left when uh, Mr. Tishman was having his speech at their graduation ceremony from fifth grade. And Mr. Tishman said that fifth graders are in transition. They are on the cusp. I like that. Let's return to that part of the story. We are all gathered here together, Mr. Tushman continued, taking off his glasses and using them to point at all of us in the audience, all your family, friends, and teachers, to celebrate not only your achievements of this past year, beat your middle schoolers, but your endless possibilities. When you reflect on this past year, I want you all to look at where you are now and where you've been. You've all gotten a little taller, a little stronger, a little smarter, I hope. Here, some of the people in the audience chuckled. But the best way to measure how much you've grown isn't by inches or the number of laps you can now run around the track or even your grade point average, though those things are important to be sure. It's what you've done with your time, how you've chosen to spend your days, and whom you have touched this year. That, to me, is the greatest measure of success. There's a wonderful line in a book by J.M. Barry, and no, it's not Peter Pan, and I'm not going to ask you to clap if you believe in fairies. Here, everyone laughed again. But in another book by J.M. Barry called The Little White Bird, he writes, he started flapping through a small book on the podium until he found the page he was looking for, and then he put on his reading glasses. Shall we make a new rule of life? Always to try to be a little kinder than is necessary. Here, Mr. Tushman looked up at the audience. Kinder than is necessary, he repeated. What a marvelous line, isn't it? Kinder than, in, than is necessary, because it's not enough to be kind. One should be kinder than needed. Why, I love that line, that concept. Is that, what? why I love that line, that concept, is that it reminds me that we carry with us as human beings, not just the capacity to be kind, but the very choice of kindness. And what does that mean? How is that measured? You can't use a yardstick. It's like I was saying just before, it's not like measuring how much you've grown in a year. It's not exactly quantifiable, is it? How do we know we've been kind? What is being kind anyway? He put on his reading glasses again and started flipping through another small book. There's another passage and a different book I'd like to share with you, he said, if you'll bear with me while I find it. Ah, here we go. In Under the Eye of the Clock by Christopher Nolan, the main character is a young man who is facing some extraordinary challenges. There's this part where someone helps him, a kid in his class. On the surface, it's a small gesture, but to this man, whose name is Joseph, it's, well, if you'll permit me, <clears throat> he cleared his throat and read from the book. It was at moments such as these that Joseph recognized the face of God in human form. It glimmered in their kindness to him. It glowed in their keenness. It hinted in their caring. Indeed, it caressed it in their gaze. He paused and took off his, re his reading glasses again. It glimmered in their kindness to him, he repeated, smiling. Such a simple thing, kindness. Such a simple thing. A nice word of encouragement given when needed. An act of friendship. A passing smile. He closed the book, put it down, and leaned forward on the podium. Children, what I want to impart to you today is an understanding of the value that simple of that simple thing called kindness. And that's all I want to leave you with, with today. I know I'm kind of infamous for my um, verbose verbosity. <laughs> Here everyone laughed. I guess he knew he was known for his long speeches. But what I want you, my students, to take away from your middle school experience, he continued, is the sure knowledge that in the future you make for yourselves anything is possible. If every single person in this room made it a rule that wherever you are, whenever you can, you will try to act a little kinder than is necessary. The world really would be a better place 
And if you do this, if you just act a little kinder than is necessary, someone else, somewhere, someday, may recognize in you, in every single one of you, the face of God. He paused and shrugged. Or whatever politically correct spiritual representation of universal goodness you happen to believe in, he added quickly, smiling, which gave a lot of laughs and loads of applause, especially from the back of the auditorium where the parents were sitting. I just love that. So remember to always be a little kinder than necessary.